Hey there, want to create a dancing liquid simulation that loops like this one? Well, let's do it. First, go to Adobe Mixamo and choose the mannequin character as that will be the best mesh to emit liquid from. Search for dance and find a dance animation that you like. It's great to pick one that has a sudden starting movement and then download with 24 or 30 frames per second. Then go to File, Import, FBX, and it's important to start off with the correct scale of the scene. So if you want to scale things down, scale them down now. I like to find my environment through Quixel Bridge, but Quixel Asset Shaders in Blender are a bit messed up. You need to make sure to set clear coat to zero, remap the specular to roughness, and also add a color ramp in between it so you can crunch those numbers up and give it a little bit more detail. And then finally remap the normal noodle to the actual normal socket. Yes, I said noodle. Pick... <laughs> Then this would be a good point to pick your song. I like you're using artlist.io, but anything will do. Just make sure the song has a nice beat drop somewhere within like the first 10 seconds so you can have a nice build up and then beat drop for the different parts of the liquid simulation. Then add the song into the video editor and click display waveform. Find the beats that you want and then cut the music together so that you have a good beginning and ending. Go back to layout and add a sequencer viewport so you can see the waveform to time the animation to. Have the animation start at a relatively smaller pose wherever the beat drop is. If the arms are out wide at the start, it's gonna be a bit harder to have the transition from the liquid buildup to the liquid dancing. Now select your mesh, go to quick effects, quick liquid, and then scale the domain, making sure to cover all of the animation movement. You want to up-res the resolution divisions to something like 128 for tests, and lower the time scale to something like 0.8. Turn off all border collisions except for the bottom, set cache to all, and check is resumable. Now select the flow mesh and set the object to inflow. If you want the cool effect of the liquid taking on some of the velocity of the dance, make sure to check initial velocity. I usually reduce this down to 0.25 so it doesn't go too fast. If you don't like there being so much space between the liquid inflow points on the arms and legs when there's fast movement, increase the sampling substeps to 3 or higher. For a higher quality bake, I'll increase the time steps maximum to 24. For more accurate, faster movement, keyframe the use flow value off at some point that you want the emission to stop, ideally at an ending beat of the song. If you have any collision objects in the scene, select one of them, add fluid, collision, and then shift select all of the other collision objects. If the object that already has the fluid collision modifier is the active selection, you can then go to object, link transfer data, copy modifiers, and that'll copy the collision modifier to all of them. If the liquid isn't colliding with the geometry, either increase the surface thickness of that object or increase the resolution divisions of the entire simulation. With this all set up, we can go back and simulate the buildup of the particles. On the animated mesh, make sure to keyframe the use flow so it turns from off to on right before the beat drop. Then add a second source of liquid. Move it to the flow folder if you already have one. Add a liquid modifier. You want to set this to inflow and have the inflow turn off at a certain point into the simulation, depending on how much water you want to build up. Now select the animated mesh, add a force, and change the shape to surface. Set the strength to a negative number and keyframe the value up over the course of the start of the simulation, leading to the beat drop. After this mesh starts its animation, keyframe the strength of this force off and make sure to keyframe the flow value back down to zero so it doesn't apply to the flow to the rest of the simulation. It's important for the force on this animated mesh to turn off slightly after its inflow starts and after the animation starts. This will mean that the first fluid that was dragged towards it will take on a bit of the velocity of the animation before it falls to the ground, which makes the transition really seamless. Now you can play with the timing and strength of these frames until it works for your simulation. The important part is to make sure the liquid covers the entire mesh at the start of the dancing animation. This can be finicky. The easiest way to do this is once you've figured out how much liquid you need in the simulation to roughly cover it, you can actually change when the second simulation inflow actually starts, so it's at a point when it's completely covered. To have faster playback during any of this, go to Liquid Domain, Particles, Viewport Display, and decrease the percentage of particles seen. While you're testing this out, make sure to use Viewport Renders to quickly tell if the timing works. To do this, set the export settings to MPEG-4 and include the audio set to AAC. Then click View and Viewport Render Animation. Now you can bathe in the glory of your halfway done creation. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe I wrote that. All right. For camera animation, first you want to figure out your focal length. I always like to go as wide as possible, all the way down to 24, but know that the more zoomed in you are, the easier it will be to hide the edges of your simulation. So find whatever balance works for you. 
For the actual animation, disable the liquid domain in the viewport so you can see the dance animation without any lag, and then animate the camera roughly to it. For this, just think about how a camera person would actually move and react to the simulation. Like, what parts would they not expect? Where would they be curious? And how does that inform whether or not the camera would be leaning in or jumping out for any part of the simulation? I first animate the key moments, then tweak with the graph editor. I also, in general, like lower angles because they hide the bottom of the simulation better. At some point in this, you want to decide an aspect ratio. I generally like square or 4x3 ratios for simulations, as it doesn't leave too much unused space on the edges. For the most naturalistic movement, you want to lag the camera rotation a couple frames behind the dance. To loop the camera animation, make sure to have keyframes on the first frame of the camera and then copy those to the end of the frame range, just one frame outside of it. Press Shift E and add a cyclic modifier, which will automatically loop it. Also make sure to remember to add a keyframe on the beginning and end of the animation for focal length as well, so it loops properly. For adding a little bit of camera shake, go to Graph View, select the X rotation, go to Modifiers, Add Modifier, Noise. Increase the scale to 10, decrease strength to 0.1, restrict the frame range to only parts that have faster movement, typically during the dance. Make sure to fade off the noise at the start and end of the animation, otherwise it will mess up the loop. Also add noise to the Z rotation and Z location with small adjustments to this to give it more naturalistic shake overall. For depth of field, add in an empty and animate it where you want the focus to be. Then in the camera, select that object as the follow object. If you need the particles to leave the frame, add a force field in the middle and animate the strength and flow up so it pushes the particles away. If you find the liquid to gain volume over time when you increase the resolution, try reducing the particle radius in the liquid domain. For rendering in a particle form, add an icosphere, set the subdivisions to 1, move this down, then select the liquid domain, particle settings, render as object, and select the icosphere. Adjust the scale as need be. Add a shader to the particle and make sure to hide the emitter in the liquid domain. To make the emission and color be based on the velocity, add a particle info node and feed the velocity through a vector map. Set to absolute so velocity shows in all parts of the world space. Feed that to a color ramp. Change to HSV and FAR to get some cool multicolor patterns. Add a math multiplier node before the color ramp to boost the values as needed. EV isn't good with particle stuff, so change the cycles, and to see the material, make sure to go to render view. Input the color ramp to the color socket and then to the emission color socket and create a new color ramp with the same input to control the emission strength. Multiply this by 10 to make it brighter. For this simulation, I want to emphasize the figure of the human, so that means the lower velocities of the particles should be brighter, which means that the lower color ramp values should also be brighter in its color and emission. For rendering, just make sure to hide the original character mesh and go right ahead. I generally like to render as an open EXR multi-layer file using PXR24 to get a smaller file size. Then take the image sequence into an editor, and if you want an extra smooth loop, render and simulate about 20 extra frames on the end, and then have that crossfade over the start of the loop. If you find there being a lighting inconsistency between the start and the end of the animation, because there's no longer liquid emitting light at the very end, just add in a light to match the lighting. Who would have thunk? From there, just add some sound design, color it up, and there you have it. A hopefully cool looking liquid simulation. If you want a more in-depth and slower tutorial, I have one that's a couple hours long that goes through the entire process of creating this. Typically, these do take seven to eight hours to create, just a heads up, but I condensed it to just a couple hours for that longer tutorial. Other than that, I hope you have a good day. I also just want to give a little update to anyone who's been following the channel for a while that this channel is evolving a little bit. Basically, I want to broaden this to cover more art and narrative storytelling as well as tutorials, so I'll still be doing educational content, but just a heads up, there will probably be some more short films, maybe behind the scenes videos and whatnot coming up soon. So so stick around for that if you want, you know, give it a like, let me know what you liked or didn't like about this tutorial, if it was too fast, please go check out that other one, if it's too slow, then I don't know, watch it on two times speed or something, but uh, yeah, beyond that, this has been Isaac Gasmarian, and I hope you've had a wonderful day, <laughs> uh, that feels weird, bye. <laughs>